In this video, I'm going to provide an overview of the GNU Image Manipulation Program, also known as GIMP. For those who are not familiar with GIMP, this is considered to be the free open source counterpart to Adobe Photoshop. A lot of the things that Adobe Photoshop can do, you can also do in the GIMP program as well. To begin here, I'm going to take you through some of the core interface elements that you will be working with when you decide to start working inside of GIMP. So the first thing that I'd like to do is we're going to use the magnifier and we're going to zoom in in this upper corner here. Just like many software packages, you have that main menu bar going across the top here, where more specifically, just to point out a couple of things, you have different types of dockable items that may not be present whenever you're working. But also too, you have a toolbox and the one thing that I really wanted to draw your attention to is single windowed mode. Right now that's active and what that means is pretty much GIMP will try to put everything into a single window, very similar to other graphic editor programs. If you click on this, it becomes almost more like a Mac based environment where you have each of the individual elements and panels as their own items. For most of the tutorials that you'll see me do here, you're going to see me working in the single window mode. Now you're also going to have several other options such as your standard file where you'll make your new files and save and open. You have edit as far as preferences and anything as far as copy and paste. You've also got the select as far as working with the selection tool, different uh, viewports as far as zooming, image editing, layers, and even colors that you can work with. You could also, instead of using the tools, that are available to you as far as icons, you can actually come to the Tools tab as well. The tool icons are located right below the main menu bar. Now, similar to Photoshop here, in the corner, you have this little tiny arrow here. If you just hover, you'll notice that GIMP, what it'll do is it will sit there and let you know what are the other items in the group. You just click and hold, and you'll be able to go through and pick any one of these. When you click on a tool, you have a set of panels right underneath here. Depending on what tool you're working with will depend on what pops up down here as far as the different options. Just to demonstrate to you, let's say for instance, I decide to come over and maybe instead go to the smudge tool. You see that it changes as far as smudge and also some of my dynamics change. Likewise as well, I choose the text tool. Once again, you see in the tool options how that changes. Right now I'm going to go back and go back into the move. Right underneath here, you also have as far as your foreground and background colors. You click and you'll get as far as your color picker. You have a couple of options here. You can just use the standard RGBs if you have those values. Some other things too is when it says HTML notation, that can also mean as far as hexadecimal color values. So if you're working on the web, you also can choose to input specifically CMYK values if you're working with print. You also kind of have a watercolor element here, but also too, you have the color wheel if that's what you're more familiar with. Some uh, programs do utilize that. And then lastly, you have specific palettes that you can build upon and you can create. So when working with these also, the other thing that I just want to point out is you can exchange different colors by hitting this arrow here. Lastly, as far as you can also have images, you also have an undo reference, and then also device options. These are things like styluses and anything external that you might want to use with the software package. Now I'm going to zoom out for a second. And we're going to zoom in on the other side of the interface just to familiarize you with what other options you have here. On the opposite side, you do have more options here. More specifically, you have a brushes panel that has different types of pre-created brushes for you. You also have a patterns tab that has pre-made patterns for you. You also have fonts, which you can actually you can kind of see right here on the left hand side, it'll actually give you a preview of what that typeface looks like. And then you also have the history as far as what you have previously worked on. So you can either step backwards to a certain point, you can delete the history, etc. Now, every time that you go through each of these different elements here, 
Like I'll go back to brushes for instance. Down at the bottom here, this changes here. So you have things like sketch, you can also add in splatters, media, textures, etc. Right now it's showing you everything. But also too, you can create your own brushes and patterns if you so choose to. Last thing I'd like to show you as far as the interface goes, it's probably one of the most important elements and it's shared across multiple programs, is the concept of the layer panel. When you begin working on a file and make a new file, this is where you're going to have one single layer by default. From there, you can break apart as far as your design and artwork as to what you want to have on the specific layers. So this becomes a very important element of the working file type whenever you're creating your projects. Outside of that, if at any point in time, let me go ahead and zoom back out here, you accidentally close something or you want to open more windows as far as having more control, remember you have this Windows drop-down menu. More specifically, you have this recently closed docs here that you can go in and if you close something by accident, you'll see the pop out here and you can just click on that and it'll reopen it for you. So that's some of the bare bones basics as far as just the overall basic interface for working with GIMP.